Hey class, uh, welcome to the Middle Ages. So this is a new chapter in our textbook. This is the second section. Um, sometimes you'll notice me calling it the second unit. Um, in one of the previous editions of the textbook, it was divided up into units, and this uh, textbook is divided into parts. So this is the second part. Um, you've made it this far, and um, I always tell my class the first unit is always the most challenging because we deal with a lot of technical aspects of the class. Um, now we're really diving into the historical aspects of the class, so this is really fun. Um, I'll take you through a journey of a lot of different types of music, so hang in and we'll do a lot of listening. So the Middle Ages covers the um, ears from 400 to 1450. It's a rather large span of time. It's a thousand years, and um, we don't have a lot of written uh, evidence of music. There's some manuscripts that exist, but obviously because of time and decay, we don't have a lot, but um, from what we have, we have put together a really quite extensive history of what Western music history was in that time period. Most of the music in the Middle Ages were religious in nature. Uh, music was not mass produced during this time, so really, as I mentioned, the only glimpse into this time period are handwritten manuscripts, and those tend to not last. By the end of the chapter, you should be very familiar with plain chant, neumes, and modes. Um, also very important, know the difference between the proper and the ordinary of a mass. We're going to be talking about a lot of the mass parts um, in this chapter and in the next unit. So once you start learning that, um, you just stick with it. Um, just like a, 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 a side note, um, know the parts of the ordinary. It's, this chapter starts to talk about what an ordinary of a mass is. So um, those are Kyrie, Gloria, Credo, Sanctus, Agnus Dei, and the pneumatic, um, Technique for memorizing that is Karen gave Chuck soggy apples. <laughs> 